Hello and welcome to today's European SharePoint Office 365 and Azure Community Webinar. My name is Shane and I'm delighted to be joined by Christian Burkhoff, Microsoft The Netherlands, who will be talking to you today about Accelerate Your RDS and VDI Migration to Windows Virtual Desktop with Azure Migrate. Remember to join the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at EuropeanSP and our hashtag is ESPC20. Don't forget to check out the Resource Center. This is updated daily with the latest blogs, ebooks, webinars, and how to videos. Simply visit SharePointEurope.com and click the content link at the top. This week, 25th to 29th of May 2020, all week, join us for free Azure Learning Online from Microsoft MVPs and industry experts. See SharePointEurope.com for further details. After the webinar, we will have a questions and answers session. Type any questions you have in the questions window. Questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and added to the Resource Center where you'll be notified by email when it is available. And now I'm going to pass you over to our webinar presenter, Christian Burkhoff. Hello, Christian. And thanks for the great introduction, by the way, and, uh, and good morning, everyone. And let's start with, uh, yeah, with the topic of, uh, of the next 45 minutes, uh, yeah, how to accelerate your traditional RDS and VDI migration to Windows Virtual Desktop. So I'm Christian Brinkoff. I work as a global black belt in the uh, Windows Virtual Desktop uh, yeah, organization within Microsoft. And as part of my role, I'm sort of like sitting between Microsoft Corp and the field, and I'm sort of like the man in the middle and I do everything around yeah, Windows for your desktop for the EMEA region. So if you want to uh, yeah, keep informed about stuff around Windows for your desktop updates, et cetera, you can follow me on Twitter as well at uh, rink of underscore C. And as part of this initiative and as well, um, yeah, all the other great stuff that a community can, uh, can yeah, accomplish and help others inside the community. I have my own blog as well. So I share uh, a lot of stuff, uh, good content, uh, technical deep dive content on Windows Virtual Desktop on my own website, on my blog. So if you need some extra information as follow up to this, uh, to this session, I encourage you to, uh, yeah, to take a look over there. And um, just a little bit background, a uh, little background like storyline about me. So I came in with the FS Logics acquisition. So FS Logics uh, was the leading company to enhance uh, yeah, VDI infrastructures to enable them to give like good Office 365 and good logon duration uh, performance on a virtualized environment. And Microsoft acquired FS Logics in November 2018. And that was a huge acknowledgement of, of Microsoft buying your, uh, yeah, your company, your product to enhance their, their new solution, Windows Switch Desktop right, uh, right now, as, uh, as it, it came from a different name and evolves into Windows Switch Desktop. So huge acknowledgement. And that was the moment as well when I joined, uh, joined Microsoft and as well transitioned into the global background role, which I'm doing today. So this is a great picture of myself and as well uh, one of the founders of Apple's Logics, Randy Cook, uh, Benny Tridge, Gabe Knut, and the program manager of uh, the Apple's Logics team and uh, 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 Brad Rowland as well, which was the CMO during uh, during that time. So great, uh, great picture that reminds me of the first visit of uh, yeah of, of the team in uh, in Redmond at Building 92. So, uh, so yeah, great momentum. And since that uh, yeah, moment, it took off and the energy around Windows for your desktop, the demand, the implementations, everything. Yeah, it's a great success. So I never expected that uh, two years back, uh, to be frank. So let's switch over to, uh, yeah, to the topic of today, which is around uh, yeah, the transformation, the migration to, uh, to Azure uh, while using Windows for your desktop. And that is basically part as well of, uh, of the digital transformation. So you go from a traditional environment to a an, cloud service, a cloud uh, yeah, native solution, a born in the cloud solution, which is Windows for your desktop. So why is Windows for your desktop different from a tradition, traditional VDI or RDS environment infrastructure? So that's something I will explain in some next slides. But I would like to first explain uh, some of the approaches while migrating Windows Virtual Desktop to Microsoft Azure while using uh, Azure Migrate. So 
before you start migrating, you 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 can yeah ask yourself the question: uh, Do I go for a greenfield, like completely new, fresh environment, clean images, and build on top of that, or do I choose for the greenfield scenario? And do I reuse some of my existing images uh, and, and use that uh, as sort of like a baseline for my host pools in Windows Virtual Desktop? So you have obviously both options with a Windows Virtual Desktop. This webinar will be uh, more about the, uh, the brownfield scenario instead of the greenfield scenario. So what are the steps to migrate your existing uh, yeah, images to, uh, to Azure as an example? And how can you transform your images into a Windows Virtual Desktop like yeah image that is like working and connecting to the brokerage service as part of windows virtual desktop so i will cover some greenfield scenarios as well so for both like scenarios it's a good learning experience uh, but it will be mainly focused on the brownfield scenario so let's give you a quick heads up what windows virtual desktop is and how it is different from like a traditional vdi or rds infrastructure so as you can see in the middle bucket over here, you see the Windows Virtual Desktop service. So in that bucket, you see a web access, diagnostic gateway management, brokering, and load balancing service. So all those services are combined into a platform as a service or a desktop as a service, which we call Windows Virtual Desktop as part of Microsoft Azure, which we manage Microsoft for you. So all those roles were, uh, yeah, what you needed to do in a traditional RDS or VDI environment, you need to spin up like servers yourself and connect the, the, the dots together to make that a complete like own self-managed control plane. Uh, that's different and requires more labor management and maintaining, uh, yeah, uh, effort. So that's now all in, in yeah combined inside a platform service. So really game-changing thing and creates as well a very fast, um, yeah, uh, approach of, of configuring and implementing a Windows yeah, a virtual desktop or Windows virtual desktop infrastructure environment on top of Azure because the infrastructure layer, the front end, is already pre built for you. We call it as well the Windows virtual desktop workspace, previously known as a tenant. So the middle bucket is where your Azure subscription is active. So that's your basically your own responsibility. So your machines, your session house, your yeah, your desktops and as well your remote apps, your profiles, your application delivery, that's part of that. So in that subscription, you uh, yeah, need to create your own images. You can use an existing image, a clean image based on Windows 10 multi-session, a single session, Windows 7 is supported, and as well Windows Server 2012, R2, 16, and 19. So that's basically free, and you can use the brokering service, the, the control plane that you can see in the middle bucket, as 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 like service for like all the operating systems that currently are supported in the Microsoft operating system stack, and in the need that you release yourself from um, yeah from management and maintaining effort as well on the compute networking and storage layer. So from the front end and as well from the back end, you release yourself from a lot of yeah traditional. Uh, work that you do in a traditional VDI or RDS infrastructure. So that's the reason as well why during COVID-19, which is a very negative situation, uh, but the positive thing is that we made it possible to enable a lot of customers very easily and fast and, and yeah, burst out to uh, like like more more resources and enabled a lot of customers to continue work from home during COVID-19. So I cannot share exact numbers that we uh, yeah moved to the platform. But if you if you hear it, you you would be amazed. So a huge acknowledgement and a great feeling as well to be part of Microsoft to help customers during yeah this negative situation to continue employees to uh, yeah to work from home. So just roughly before we jump into the uh, yeah the real topic today, uh, what is Windows Virtual Desktop in four bullet points for the people that don't know what Windows Virtual Desktop is? So Windows Virtual Desktop is a GA. Uh, products, so you can use it for production purposes. Obviously, it's the best virtualization experience on Azure because uh, you get Windows 10 multi-session as an exclusive uh, offer for Windows Virtual Desktop, which is a new operating system which gives you the experience of Windows 10 single session and the benefits of multi-session, which you know from Windows Server, without the trade-off and experience that you know from Windows Server if you use it for multi uh, multi-session purposes. So you have the same benefits of Windows 10. However, the benefits of multi-session, so you can combine more users on one virtual machine and yeah, be beneficial of the resources that you provide. So that's one of the key benefits. The other benefit is 
that it is completely optimized for Office 365 Pro Plus. So one of the examples of that is uh, the acquisition of Avis Logics, but as well changes in the core product. For example, in OneDrive per machine, Teams per machine, and the upcoming audio and video redirection for Teams that is coming to provide the similar experience that you have with Teams in a like, local laptop environment as well in your virtual session on top of your session host in Windows Virtual Desktop. So you can easily, as, as part of this topic, obviously migrate uh, from RDS, uh, desktops and remote apps to Windows Virtual Desktop. So we combine uh, the, yeah, both scenarios and we provide as well Windows 10 single session use cases with the brokering service, which is new in comparison to RDS. So easy way to, uh, yeah, to reuse your existing investments of, of RDS or, or traditional VDI infrastructures. And because we built on top of Azure, you can deploy and scale in minutes. So you can burst out because we have the capacity in store for you and you can decrease the amount of services or servers session hosts that you use as well on demand and only pay for the compute costs that you really use in a running state. So that is in, in a quick like four bullet points, uh, high level overview of what Windows Virtual Desktop is. So as you can see, it stays generally available. One thing that we recently announced on the 30th of April is uh, some, some, yeah, some real upgrades, updates on a Windows Virtual Desktop. We also call that the Spring 2020 update. And with that update, we make the shift to ARM uh, as your resource manager, uh, as you know from ARM, from the ARM-based portal, which you use uh, probably every day to uh, manage your Azure services. So we are aligning with, uh, with that portal with a new uh, ARM-based model of Windows Virtual Desktop. And we announced it on the 30th of April, which is roughly like three, three weeks ago. So what are the differences between uh, yeah, the current GA fall to the 19, pro 19 product and the ARM-based product, the Spring 2020 update, which is now available in public preview for everyone. So one of the key elements that I would like to cover before I jump into the migration topic is that in the new ARM-based model, you have the option to configure user uh, Active Directory user groups. So you can define a group to a specific uh, remote app, application group or desktop group and make it very dynamic to configure that. That was impossible in the current fall 2019 non-ARM based release, which is currently in GA. Uh, you have an enhanced admin capability. So role-based access control, our RBAC is all possible via the Azure ARM portal. So you can just create objects, delegate access to your admins on all the objects inside your uh, Azure environment as part of Windows Virtual Desktop. So your workspace, your host pools, your application groups, everything can be um, yeah, delegated in terms of access from, uh, from uh, the IEM um, yeah, menu uh, option as part of the Azure portal. Uh, we integrate right now as well with the ARM-based model inside the Azure uh, PowerShell module. So we are leveraging the AZ desktop virtualization module name, which is now integrated, which is great because it's easy to import that module inside your computer because of that. Uh, we have that management UI now integrated in the Azure portal. So previously that was partly PowerShell, partly uh, partly via uh, via separate web GUI. Uh, right now we integrate completely in the Azure portal. So you just search for Windows for your desktop. I will show you some demos later on how it looks and feels because everything in this presentation is focused on the new ARM-based uh, model. So how you uh, migrate from on-prem to uh, to the ARM-based model of Windows for your desktop. We integrate completely with uh, with the new model with log analytics, so it's easy to export logs to uh, to log analytics to your log analytics workspace and create custom dashboards. We make it possible to change the metadata location. So once we go GA with the ARM-based model this quarter, we will add REST Europe as well to the uh, to the offering and all the pre steps like creating your tenant, which we now call the workspace, at a consent piece. Everything is now consolidated inside the portal, so no pre steps. Uh, that are separate from the portal anymore. So great, uh, yeah, great shift in a more simplified way of doing the enrollment and the management and maintaining work of uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. So let's switch over to the uh, for the topic of today around migration, which is also yeah sort of like part of the digital transformation where we all are in today. So what drives uh, migrations to Azure? So here are a couple of key elements that can trigger you to move to Azure or to Windows for your desktop. So what we hear from customers is that uh, that they are not, um, yeah, they are not, yeah, they don't want to invest anymore in physical hardware or 
uh, they have like a contract with an ISV or a partner that uh, that expires and they want to yeah move to Azure and want to be efficient and don't want to invest like uh, in, in in hardware and um, yeah want to be more efficient in terms of expanding and bursting capacity as part of their environment so there's a good reason to go to uh, to Azure and as well to Windows for your desktop so acquisitions could be a good reason you acquire a company you need more capacity because of that very fast so you use Azure because we have the capacity in place uh, same for urgent capacity needs similar kind of reason um, security threats you want to optimize your data center environment we have already the highest security ISO certificates in place for you uh, so uh, you can leverage a very highly secure data center very easily by entering the Azure platform uh, compliance reasons application innovation and the software and support uh, is all integrated in the Azure platform as well if you leverage an SLA to get the proper support so there are some kinds of uh, trigger points to uh, yeah to drive the migration to Windows virtual desktop and as well to uh, to Azure so the great thing about um, about the services that we have in Azure is that we have Azure Migrate, which is our yeah orchestrator, our service that can help you to uh, yeah migrate either services like like a virtual machine, but as well SQL databases like just data itself, uh, but as well right now virtual desktop infrastructures. So we have a new integration with virtual desktop infrastructures in the Azure Migrate service right now. And the similar thing we have now for web apps, by, web apps, by the way, but I'm covering only the virtual desktop piece uh, today. So if you go to the Azure portal and search for, uh, for Azure Migrate, you will see uh, the VDI uh, option in, in the menu and the migration goals. So that's, yeah, that's partly new. So it's uh, released, I think roughly nine months ago. And with that, you can uh, collect information outside your uh, current RDS or VDI infrastructure and get insights, do an in in assessment and eventually migrate your environment to uh, to Azure with uh, with Windows Virtual Desktop as an, uh, yeah final destination as an example. So what do you need to do? Uh, what are the basically the, the, the steps that you need to take to go from A to Z and end up in Azure via Azure Migrate? So first of all, you need to have all the prerequisites in place. I will show you what the prerequisites are in some next slides. So after that, after you're done with the prerequisites, you can start with the Azure Migrate setup. So you, uh, you set up the prerequisites of Azure Migrate, then you discover your virtual machines, uh, which basically collects the information outside your virtual desktops. Uh, you review your assessment, you replicate your virtual machines, so sort of like set them standby to Azure, and then test your migration, see if everything works properly. And when that is, so you finish all your checkboxes, then you can start the migration to, uh, yeah, to, to production. So that are basically the seven steps that we're gonna discuss during this presentation. So how does that look from uh, yeah high level architecture point of view? So this is a picture that shows how yeah Azure Migrate works in conjunction with our assessment partner uh, Lakeside. Lakeside is a as ISV that does like monitoring and as well assessments on virtual desktop infrastructures and we have them as a great partner that integrate inside our Azure Migrate solution. So with the current VDI infrastructure in place, you need to gather uh, based on, uh, on an agent that they provide the information out of that virtual desktop infrastructure and it creates an assessment in Azure Migrate that shows you, okay, what is the, uh, what is the uh, resources, what are the resources that I need to, uh, yeah, pick inside Azure to provide the similar kind of experience that I know from on-prem. So with that agent, you can collect that information and it will give you a, a price estimate as well, what your eventually, your, your like your cost will be inside Azure. So from a uh, high level uh, architecture point of view, it is lo looking like this. You can migrate from for example, Hyper-V infrastructures as well as VMware, but Amazon and Google Cloud are supported as well. So if you want to do an cloud to uh, uh, other cloud to Azure migration, we uh, we support it as well. So I will show you how that um, injection uh, looks and feels if you want to migrate machines, virtual machines from on-prem to uh, to Azure as well later on. So let's uh, talk a little bit about like what are the migration steps that you need to take from a Windows virtual desktop point of view. So as part of the prerequisites, you need to have a user identity 
uh, yeah, configured. So which basically means that you need to have an Active Directory environment and as well an Active Directory environment that is synchronized to Azure Active Directory with Azure AD uh, Connect. So that's the first step that you need to do. A lot of like customers, the vast majority is already using Office 365. So that prerequisites is, is, is being done by almost every company already. So the next uh, step would be around virtual machines. Uh, so how do you bring your own image to, uh, to Azure? You can, you can decide to yeah, build your own image, obviously, but you can, as part of this presentation, learn how you can bring your own image to, uh, to Windows Virtual Desktop. Uh, you lift and shift basically virtual machines from on-prem to Azure while using the Azure Migrate service, which, an, which uses an appliance in between. Uh, which you uh, need to install on uh, a VMware infrastructure, or you can use the built-in like components of Hyper-V without an agent. I'll cover that uh, later on as well. And you need to create, before we start the migration, uh, Azure Virtual Network, because that's where your virtual desktops and the Windows Virtual Desktop environment will be, run, uh, will be running in. So that's basically your local area network inside Azure. Uh, you need to create a workspace, which was previously known as a tenant. So the workspace is basically your yeah your control plane that I just explained in that high level architecture slide in the beginning. And after that, you can decide if you want to sysprep your uh, your your yeah your base image, your golden image from on-prem, uh, or you want uh, or you pick uh, yeah the, the the registration approach while installing the agent uh, via like. Uh, scripts or manually. I will cover that in this presentation as well. So if you've done the prerequisites and like the, the steps underneath the virtual machine section, um, yeah, then the part starts, okay, what do I need to do with my user specific application data? So let's say, for example, I have UPD or roaming profiles in my existing environment. How do I convert them to the FS Logics profile container solution? I'll cover that as well during this presentation. And how do I sync, for example, my data to uh, to Azure? And that's not something I will cover, but you can, for example, use Azure File Sync for that. You can uh, install the Azure File Sync agent on-prem and migrate your data to uh, to Azure very easily to your Azure Files uh, environment. And then in the end, when we are done with that, you can install the client or use the web portal and log on to your Windows for your desktop environment. So a very yeah, easy way of doing the migration if you if you uh, ask me. So let's start with the first demo of today and, and start with the assessment of uh, Azure Migrate. So as I said earlier, if you go to Azure Migrate in the portal, you will see the VDI option. So if you click on the VDI option, you will uh, get the question, okay, I, do you do you want to add tools and which tools do you want to uh, want to use? So as part of the assessments tools, you see the Lakeside SysTrack uh, solution. So that's the solution we're going to use for this uh, demo. So that's the uh, which I showed earlier, the assessment tool, which we need to install the agent uh, uh, of and uh, uh, yeah, and get gather all the information inside your VDI infrastructure or IES infrastructure to eventually uh, yeah make visible inside Azure. So we uh, after that we're going to use the Azure Migrate Server Migration tool, which can lift and shift your images as well as your infrastructure services to Azure. And after that, uh, yeah, we can um, yeah do test migrations, etc. So let's add first the Lakeside uh, assessment uh, tool to our Azure Migrate project. So when we are done with that, we can shift to uh, yeah to the Lakeside solution. So we click on register with Azure Migrate, and we click on log on. And uh, yeah, in the console we log on, and we get uh, all the proper. Uh, agents uh, that we need to install on top of our existing VDI infrastructure environment to do the assessment. So you download the agent and you install the agent on top of your uh, virtual desktops. Uh, like this could be a Windows 10 single session or Windows Server environment. You just run the agent installation and then afterwards, uh, yeah, all the information like CPU, RAM, configuration sets will be uh, yeah, injected inside the Azure Migrate console. So, um, so we can do the uh, after that. Uh, yeah, that collection is finished. Of uh, yeah, of gathering all the information, we can see uh, yeah the configuration and the usage of your existing VDI infrastructure environment. So you can see which kinds of desktops you're using, or which kinds of like server operating systems you are using. What is the utilization? What is the role? What is the template? 
uh, is it like a knowledge worker or a power user? And you can see yeah, what the vast majority is using in terms of CPU, RAM, IOPS, and networking uh, yeah, insights. So with that information, uh, yeah, you can see, okay, what do I need then in Azure to get the same kind of like experience, user experience inside Azure while using Windows Structure Desktop? So, so all kinds of great insights, uh, insights that you can see here that eventually will move inside the, um, yeah, the Azure portal. So all those insights will uh, go as well from the Lakeside portal that I just showed to you, as well directly inside the Azure portal. So if you click on your discovered users inside the Azure portal uh, in Azure Migrate, you will see all the information here as well. See what kind of applications or how many applications are being used if it is using a multi-user operating system. Uh, what eventually the target uh, Azure Virtual Machine size this queue is. So what um, yeah, what uh, Lakeside will suggest to use in Azure, all kinds of good information that you can find here uh, that you can eventually use to, uh, yeah, to do your proper designing proactively to provide the same user experience as part of Windows Virtual Desktop. So um, what we then can do, if you succeed uh, with all your um, yeah, investigation and you get all the proper information you have, okay, this will be my uh, my SKU, my size in Azure, you can start with the, uh, yeah, the server migration. So as you can see on the screen, you see uh, the assessment tool. That's something we just finished. So now we can move to the server migration part of it. So you start now with like the real lift and shift procedure of, of migrating your images as well as your infrastructure environment to Microsoft Azure. So you click on, uh, on a discover, and if you discover, you have the option to connect to uh, either a VMware, uh, vSphere, hypervisor environment, Hyper-V, or a physical like environment. So you can pick what fits best in your needs. So I will pick for uh, for Hyper-V in this demo. Uh, so as part of Hyper-V, you need to uh, yeah download the uh, the software and connect to your on-premises Hyper-V environment. And then it starts replicating your machines if you select which you want to use. So as part of the selection, it starts to pre-sync your virtual desktops or your infrastructure services. And when that is done, it will show a healthy state. And after you're uh, done with that yeah, pre-synchronization uh, of your virtual machines to Azure, you can start with the migration. You could do a test migration as well. So you can test like the setup, you can do it in a separate VNet, or you can do like just directly the migration, and then it will migrate the virtual machines directly inside your Azure virtual machines option and inside that menu. So you will see show yeah the, the virtual machines that, that that will show up as you know them from on-prem as well in your Azure uh, subscription. So that's that's basically like uh, the assessment piece and the migration piece. So let's start and, and, and start building the other prerequisites, which we can do right now. And that's basically creating the workspace, which we also know uh, as the tenant, which we renamed to workspace as part of the spring 2020 ARM-based update that I just explained. So this is a great picture, by the way, of my own workspace. I receive a lot of great uh, positive feedback on it. So uh, if you are interested in, in learning more about that setup, yeah, have a look at my blog and learn everything and, and see what products I, I use to get to work from home uh, most efficiently as part of my role as part of Microsoft. So let's uh, talk and, and walk you through what you need to do to uh, create the workspace as part of the new ARM-based model of Windows Virtual Desktop. So you go to the Azure portal and you search for Windows Virtual Desktop and you open the Windows Virtual Desktop service. So as part of the Windows Virtual Desktop service, you click on create a host pool. You select your subscription, your resource group, and a host pool name. A host pool name is basically a set of session hosts that you use as part of your, uh, yeah, your, your desktop sessions and your remote apps. You select pooled if you want to do a pooled approach, but personal if you want to do a single session. You skip the virtual machine assignment and you register the workspace. This, so this, this could be like any organization name or something like that, which is basically that control plane that tenant that I just explained. But when you're done with that, you can click on review and create and do basically all the pre-steps to move uh, forward. So as you saw, I'm not uh, yeah, picking the virtual machines option 
uh, because I'm using an existing environment. So I'm switching to either a custom image or I use the uh, agent approach, which I'm going to talk about in some next slides. So when you're done, you will see that the migration uh, host pool, which I call Migrate Host Pool, is available. And you can find your registration keys as well here, which can be uh, usable for the next steps. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do right now when you're done with the pre steps and you have your images in place and ready to uh, yeah, to use as a baseline for your new Windows for your desktop environment. So let's start and talk about yeah, the option to use an Azure managed custom image. So for example, if you migrate it and lift it, lift it and shift it, your uh, on-premises like custom image now with Azure Migrate, it is now ready in, in the Azure portal. You will see it as an example as VM-image2 available. And what you now need to do is you need to capture that image as an Azure managed image. So you can just click on capture here and inside that capture menu, you can uh, yeah, start and create a custom image that you can use as a baseline for your host pools based on your existing images from on-prem because you migrated them with Azure Migrate. So you can just pick like a name, a virtual machine name here, or I, I need to say it correct, a, a custom image name, which can be like V1 or the date or something similar, a resource group over here. And uh, if you click on create, it will automatically shut down the machine and uh, will sysprep the machine as well. You can sysprep the machine inside the VM as well. Uh, it's what you prefer. Sometimes uh, it's better to do it inside the virtual machine and then afterwards do the uh, capturing process. But that's basically uh, something yeah, you as an, as an IT admin can, uh, can do best. And uh, if you're done with that, click on create and then the custom image will be created. So then we need to switch back to the host pool. And then in the host pool creation, we can add machines. And in that uh, machine creation process, you can browse for all images and disks. So you can obviously use an, a, a greenfield, uh, or, yeah, greenfield scenario, and then you can select, uh, select an image, and then you can select like Windows 10 multi-session or Windows 10 single session or Windows server. Uh, as a, like a clean image that we provided for you. So that's more like a greenfield scenario. But if you want to go for a brownfield scenario, you select browse all uh, images and disks. So then this option will open. And this, this menu looks probably very familiar with how you do like virtual machine enrollments right now today as well uh, as part of uh, your Azure portal because it's the same ARM uh, yeah, based procedure. So here you can see in my images, your uh, Azure managed images that you just created as part of that capturing process. So if you select one of your images here, that will be, be used as a baseline of, of enrolling multiple machines in your environment. So that could be a very efficient approach to migrate your existing virtual machine uh, like, like Golden Image to Azure and then based on that image, expand it to different virtual machines as part of your host pool. So the other option, and that are basically the images that you see over here underneath my images, but the other option that you have is, is to go for uh, shared images as part of the shared image gallery. So the, uh, the real benefit of the shared image gallery is that you can do like updates, update management, update image management as part of the Azure shared image gallery. Uh, uh, if you do, for example, an image update, you can easily manage your images via the shared image gallery. With my images, your Azure Managed Image, uh, your custom image will be selected, but it's it's not easy to update that. You need to recreate your host pool. So a better option is to go directly for the shared image gallery. And as part of the shared image gallery, you have the option to create different versions of images, as I just explained. So uh, if you want to go for that and you want to do the prerequisites first before you create the image, so the capturing process that I just explained stays and remains the same. However, you need to add an additional image inside the Azure Shared Image Gallery to make that possible as a selection point here that you see on the screen. If you're interested in that, in that manual, um, yeah, please have a look at my website. Uh, it's it's uh, included in the new uh, ARM-based enrollment procedure that I just uh, yeah, released a couple of weeks back. So I encourage you to take a look uh, at that and uh, yeah, learn and, and see what uh, Shared Image Gallery can do for you because it's a great uh, kind of feature and technology as part of image management as part of Windows Virtual Desktop. So 
if we did the enrollment, we uh, yeah we now did the enrollment based on a custom image as part of your host pool enrollment. The other option that you have is to use the uh, registration approach of the agents because you can do it automated via desired state configurations that we provide as part of Azure, but you can do that manually as well. So if you have your own automated procedure and you want to do like the uh, image update process yourself and add post installation like the agents and software to it, we have that option for you as well. So let's uh, switch back to the agent installation and here you need to paste in that registration token and then you can install the agent. Uh, so that could be an, uh, yeah, a more manual approach of connecting your existing images to the Windows Virtual Desktop brokering service. We can obviously do it as well completely automated. So this uh, command that you can see over here can completely unattended install, install as well that agent for you. So we provide that as well. And if you look at my, uh, my blog, I have a complete procedure how you can do this as part of that uh, ARM-based uh, blog article. So there are the two options that you can provide to uh, yeah, connect your existing images, your existing virtual desktop infrastructure, RDS infrastructure, uh, you reuse those images and yeah, connect them to the Windows for Jessa brokering service. So we finished the first two steps. So we did uh, the prerequisites, we did the migration assessment of the virtual machines, and now we can do the user and data migration. So as part of uh, a migration script that we currently have available, you can migrate your existing roaming profiles or UPD, uh, yeah, user profile disk to uh, yeah, the FSODIX uh, component, the FSODIX profile container profile solution that we use as fundament for Windows for your desktop. So if you're interested in that, uh, in that procedure and as well the script for that, yeah, co come look at my website as well. I have an article where you can find the installation um, yeah, file script modules to do this, uh, what I'm just going to show you. So you need to run this command, convert UPD profile. If you convert from UPD, we have for roaming profiles as well and for UPM as well. So you need to define a profile pad and a, a pad to, uh, yeah, to eventually store your uh, VHD or VHDX in, which is your FSLX profile container. So you run this command and that command that um, uh, yeah, converts the profile uh, directly into a virtual uh, hard drive, which uh, yeah, is the FSLX profile container. So, uh, so with that process, you, um, yeah, you eventually create a VHDX and that VHDX is uh, then available on, uh, on like an Azure file share, as in vShare or Azure Netter files. And then you can use it afterwards as part of your Windows Virtual Desktop session. And you can reuse your existing profile, your existing uh, yeah, roaming profile inside your new Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Uh, however, to be frank, uh, the vast majority of our customers is, is doing a, uh, yeah, a greenfield kind of profile scenario because they want to start up clean because normally when you have an old profile, a lot of uh, yeah, uh, trash crap is, is still inside our profile and they take that opportunity to, uh, yeah, to refresh like that profile and go for Windows uh, Virtual Desktop with a clean uh, FSLX Profile Explorer Container Profile. So when we are done with that, with the virtual machine assessment, lift and shifts, we did the installation and the assignment of uh, of the yeah of the desktops that, that that's something that still needs to be done so we did like the profile migration but the assignment of users to uh, to your specific uh, windows for your desktop desktops and remote app that's something we still need to uh, need to do so let's start with that procedure so if you switch back to the azure portal and you go to uh, yeah the host pool that you created um, yeah you can you can see which uh, which sessions uh, are active on, on a specific uh, account that you can see here, but you can do as well the direct assignments to uh, the host pool uh, that we just created as part of the migration process. So you can select here migrate the migrate host pool, that's the one I just created, and that includes the, um, yeah, the images, the session host that I'm using as part of my um, yeah, migration process as part of my traditional VDI and RDS infrastructure. So as you can see, I'm now refreshing my uh, my applications, and you can see that my migrate workspace is showing up. And if I start that, then it will set up a session to my new uh, yeah Windows for your desktop host pool, which is based on my existing 
a golden image from my on-premises infrastructure. So I enter in my credentials over here, and then I enter in my uh, yeah my session host as part of my host pool, as part of my Windows Virtual Desktop, new Windows Virtual Desktop environment. So I um, yeah log on, and as you can see, um, I'm logging on to a, a Windows Server 2016 environment, and that's based on my existing uh, existing uh, yeah environment that I uh, migrated via Azure Migrate. So as as you can see, um, let uh, let me switch uh, switch over. Uh, it's uh, it logs on. Uh, I don't know what my uh, what my demo is doing right now. Uh, there it is. So it logs on to my Windows Server 2016 environment, and uh, yeah, you can use it as you uh, did in your on-premises environment as well. Uh, while using your existing profiles, if you decide to migrate your UPD or roaming profiles to Windows for your desktop while using the uh, the migration script that we provide as well. So a great example of uh, Server 2016. You can obviously do it for Windows 10 uh, single session as well and any other operating system that we support. So that leads me up to uh, yeah to the end of this uh, presentation. So I hope everybody is uh, uh, yeah did, did not um, yeah disconnect because of the connection issues that I had. I hope you learn a bunch as well. Uh, as call to action to get some uh, some homework and to learn some uh, something more about uh, Windows Virtual Desktop as well as my, Azure Migrate. Uh, where can you find the Windows Virtual Desktop agents that I just explained as well to connect to the brokering service? All kinds of great information can be found uh, in this uh, in this slide at ata.ms.wvd. Uh, Microsoft Mechanics is a free video training course on uh, on YouTube that you can use as well to train yourself on WVD. And uh, the Azure Migrate link over here points you to the Azure Migrate documentation that is very helpful as well to learn more about, okay, what can Azure Migrate do more for me besides my VDI infrastructure? For example, Migrate SQL to SQL uh, as a service as part of Azure, that kind of services. So all part of the digital transformation where we are in. So um, yeah, with that, I would like to uh, yeah, hugely thank you for being here, hanging in with me, also during the connection uh, um, yeah, drop. It only took like, uh, I think 60 or 120 seconds. So that's great in terms of recovering time. Uh, so uh, Shane, do we have any questions that we want to cover right now before I uh, yeah, disconnect? Sure. Uh, thanks for a great presentation, Christian. Yes, now we will start the questions and answers part. And should you wish to ask a question, please type it into the questions window now. Okay, so some questions in, Christian. Is there a cost for using Azure Migrate to migrate? Uh, so yeah, there is a cost-free migration approach. However, that's with, without the Lakeside technology. So if you want to migrate only like your, uh, your virtual machines without the assessment piece, uh, that's like included in, in, the, in the free service. Okay. Uh, do non-ARM based and ARM based use the same WVD tenant? Because I could not see non-ARM based host pools in a private demo in the Azure portal. Yeah, so that's a great question, by the way. So um, if you currently are an existing customer and you use the non-ARM based model, uh, you cannot see it in the ARM based model. You use the same control plane, however, you cannot see it in the ARM-based model. So we will provide you, hopefully within uh, a couple of weeks or months or so, a migration tool that can do a seamless migration between the non-ARM-based model of WVD and the ARM-based model. Okay, uh, do customers need to pay for server OS licenses on WVD for multi-session servers OS, or it's only compatible? or it's only compute, i.e. CPU, RAM, and HD? Yeah, so that's a, another very good question. So the licenses that you need for Windows Virtual Desktop are um, based on Windows 10 multi-session, single session, and Windows 7 with three years free extended security updates are uh, M365 E3 or E5, or Microsoft E3, E5, and as well the Education Forum and Windows 10 VDA licenses. So you need one of those, and if you have those, the licenses of the operating system are already included. If you want to use a uh, server-based operating system, you still need to have an RDS uh, call for that with the client operating systems, which includes as well Windows 10 multi-session. 
you don't need an uh, RDS call anymore. So you save on the RDS call and you save on the operating system cost as well, because we include that operating system cost already in the license and therefore you only pay for the compute cost in Azure. So that's correct. Okay. Is there a difference between RDS and VDI? So that's another good question. So we can probably spend another topic on what are the differences between uh, VDI and RDS. So VDI stands for Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. And that, that I from infrastructure is basically traditional because that infrastructure is something you maintain yourself. And with Windows Virtual Desktop, the infrastructure is already pre-built for you and managed by Microsoft. So VDI is not the right term for Windows Virtual Desktop. RDS is Remote Desktop Services, which includes and self-managed traditional infrastructure as well. So in terms of VDI, VDI is mostly based on, on a desktop operating system and RDS is, is, is based on a server operating system. So that are the two differences between VDI and RDS. And with Windows Virtual Desktop, we can do both and we can do the infrastructure side all together, pre-built for you completely as part of the, uh, yeah, the managed service. So that's the reason why it's a game-changing way of doing desktop virtualization. Okay. Are other ISP VDI or RDS migration tools available or are there other third-party tools support us? So as far as I know, there are not uh, like similar uh, solutions like Lakeside available right now. Um, but we might want to uh, yeah, expand with different partners soon. So yeah, please keep an eye out on uh, aka.ms slash WVD partner. And that's a page where all our partners are listed. So you can yeah, just have a look there and see if, uh, if some new partners are showing up that can provide the same. Okay. Can you provide an example how to migrate from Citrix VDI on-prem or Azure to WVD? So, so what's that question? How can I migrate from Citrix on Azure to WVD? Yeah. Can you provide an example of how to migrate from Citrix VDI from either on-prem or Azure to WVD? Yeah, so the steps that you need to take from Citrix on-prem or Citrix on Azure to WVD are basically the same as I just explained. Uh, so in this presentation, I used the Windows Virtual Desktop native technology of Microsoft. You can obviously use as well the Citrix and Windows Virtual Desktop partnership that we have with Citrix and use Citrix on Azure while using all the advantages of uh, Windows Virtual Desktop as well, like Windows 10 multi-session, Windows 7, the licensing benefits of not paying for the operating system costs. Uh, all those things can be done with Citrix as well and WVD. So, um, so yeah, it depends what you, uh, yeah, which direction you want to take. But in terms of the steps, they are pretty much the same as I just explained. Okay. Uh, to capture, do we need to still generalize the image? Uh, yes. If you want to go for the base uh, custom image, you need to generalize it. Yes, and then shut down the uh, the machine. Okay, and will MFA break anything using this model? Uh, Azure MFA, I, I guess that uh, the person uh, meant. So uh, Azure MFA, uh, if you include that, you are not breaking anything. The only thing that you uh, yeah, increase is the security of your environment. Okay, uh, do we still need to set up ADDS? Uh, so ADDS, uh, if I understand that correct, is Active Directory Domain Services. And the answer to that is yes, you still need to have an Active Directory environment. However, in the short, uh, yeah, in the short term, near future, we will add Azure AD, AADJ support for the computer account session host as well. So then you can completely move away from uh, ADDS. Okay. Any Microsoft native VDI assessment tools coming in the future? because customers are not always keen on buying third-party solutions for assessing their systems? Yeah, that's a good question. So we are currently investigating the options for that. Okay. Um, will this migrate to the old WVD or to the new preview? Um, so it's in the, independent from, uh, from which of the two. So the assessment solution that I just explained uh, it's not depending on the non-ARM and the ARM-based model. So you can provide it on both, uh, yeah, additions, types of, uh, yeah, the Windows Virtual Desktop non-ARM and the ARM-based model of Windows Virtual Desktop. 
Great. And here's the last question, Christian. <laughs> We're nearly there. Um, is it recommendable to deploy Spring 2020 pool in production right now? Um, so in terms of the technology, um, so we came from a very long way. Uh, so we did already a lot of private previews before we moved into the public preview. So I can say that the product, the service, the ARM-based model is very stable. However, a public preview doesn't give you the SLA for support yet. So if you need help on, on like implementation or technical um, yeah, problem solving, you need to uh, yeah, do that via the tech community. And that could be a caveat for some customers. So it is production ready in terms of uh, it is like, like stable enough. But in terms of SLAs, et cetera, you might want to wait till the end of this quarter once we go into GA. Brilliant. Uh, Christian, on behalf of the ESPC community, thank you for taking the time today to complete this webinar. Yeah. We really appreciate this. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. Super. Okay. Uh, thank you again, Christian. And this is the end of the webinar today. Please see SharePointEurope.com for further details on all upcoming webinars or visit our resource center for all previous episodes. Again, a big thank you to Christian for joining us today and thank you all too for joining us. Take care and goodbye.